Steve Trevino, Captain Evil, take two of the first episode <laughs> on our own, in our own studio, doing a podcast. We, um, oh, are you, are we going to tell them what happened? Of course. We're always honest. Of we, we, are. Uh, we were so excited because we did uh, yesterday. You know, we always do these a couple days before they get released so that yes. we can edit, so that we can uh, make them look uh, good, yeah. right? And yesterday we were so excited to be in the home <laughs> studio. We were like, clap, sound check. And, and here we go. And then so we did, we did, a, we did a, a, a podcast, which, which it, was, it was good, right? Yeah, we were a little um, nervous about not having the actual camera guys in the room with us. Um, but we, uh, we, we finished it up and then we moved on with it. We have so much going on here at the house. And we moved on with our day and producer Rick... About uh, four in the afternoon. About four in the afternoon, he was like, hey, listen, guys. Uh, no, he texts me. He goes, did you hit record on the sound? I don't even know what it's called. That's how like not tech I am. On the sound mixer. That's right. what it's called. And I was like, uh, I didn't. Yeah, I don't know why he's blaming us. We, like, <laughs> hey, guy, why, do you, why are you even on, Rick? Like, can you tell us what to do? You know? No, like, no, no, I, I do not blame you. <laughs> no, I take full responsibility because camera guy Nate gave me instructions, but I was running in late yesterday and I thought you guys had it under control and I should have known. This is, you can't this, have it under control uh, again, without me. I, like, I, again, we're on the pod. Oh, by the way, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Steve Trevino, Captain Evil. We, we hope that you're enjoying all the episodes. <laughs> um, no, again, I, like I laugh because you just said on the podcast... No, Rick, I assume all responsibility. No, but you missed what I followed it up with. What I you... said, I ran in late and I saw you guys had the cameras running. I thought you all had it under control. Oh, and so I should somehow, have known better. <laughs> somehow, Rick, it's still my fault. And she's saying y'all, including you, when it's, um, you can't physically reach through the computer screen. It's just, she's basically blaming me. So... But, but we, uh, uh, there's some new things in the um, studio, as you can see. And but, but just to clarify, you guys, this is not finished. The, I feel I, like people are going to judge my, my studio design work, and it's not done. No, I, again, clear. like it is amazing. The, the podcast has been so special. It just has been, <laughs> it's been a really interesting. Special. Yes, it has been an interesting journey to watch my wife change her habits for you people really because you just gave me a dirty look right before the camera started rolling because no. i said something that annoyed the hell out of you no here i am you know going oh my god she takes forever to make decisions you know this this studio's never gonna be done because i know my wife because i've been with her for a very long time but all of a sudden all of a sudden oh making a decision on the paint oh bought furniture and i'm like wait wait a minute who is this person? Okay, by the way, people, when they saw the baby room, the nursery reveal on my Instagram, they said, we understand why it took you a long time to make decisions. There's like every little detail in that room. <laughs> it cracks me up how you always get the credit. <laughs> like, it's just amazing to me that people are always like, oh my God, like, even my mom. For my the mom's record, here. that was the one room where you <laughs> let me have free reign no, and no, do whatever I want. My mom is here. And, and she was like, oh, Renee did such a good job in here. I'm like, did the woman put shiplap? Did she paint? Did she drag the dresser upstairs with her big muscles? No, she did not. With my bulging biceps. Dude, but everybody, oh my God, Renee. Wow, Renee. How, how did you do that, Renee? Who, who am I? Chop liver over here? <laughs> Come on, like me and Tim painted the room because you, by the way, like literally I go, I go, listen, I go, I don't want that room to like, we got to get going thinking. And in my head, I'm already planning. Which uh, room? Are we talking about the nursery this or room. the studio? Okay. Like I'm already planning other stuff. You know me, I have to have my projects every day. I have to have my projects. So I'm already planning my projects. I'm, I'm getting ready for the spring. You know, I got to get my grass seed. I got to get, uh. I'm already thinking about weed eating and getting everything, you know, nice, ready for spring. Right. And and because I'm thinking there's no way Renee's going to have me paint. And then well, like no, a, you pushed me into it. You rushed me into painting. You were like, you need to pick out. You came in at like five and you were like, you need to pick out a paint color this evening. Go to Home Depot and get it because road manager Timmy and I are painting tomorrow. And I was like, Ugh. so I picked out colors. In the history of us. 
I have said exactly <laughs> what you just said I said to you <laughs> probably a hundred times and never once have you been like, okay, honey, I'll go do that. Well, no, but no, on the, what, no, in the podcast, y- people yes, are watching. We, not because people and, are no, watching, people are because watching. we have a schedule. And, and Miss Renee, oh, well, let me, uh, let me show people how amazing I am. That's bullshit. No, because we can't have people in here painting while we're sitting in here. Look, so there's like a schedule. You look fantastic. I, I, I didn't tell you, you look beautiful. In my rented sweater? Thank yes. you. Why are you so, changing the subject? And no, we're going back to our, well, no, because <laughs> I looked across the table here and I was like, damn, my girl fine. That bitch is bad. <laughs> I'm wearing real pants this episode. No I'm more, not. No more stretchy waistband. I'm not. Um, but, but anyway, so then, so then she picks out the paint color, which by the way, I'm like, um, okay, right? Well, no, and you then, like rushed me into a decision and then I had four colors up on the wall and you came in and you were like, you like that one? Because I no, told no, no, you no, no, my no, choice. No, no, no. And you were like, I like that no, one. No, you asked me, you said, which one do you like? And I go, I like that one. Because the, uh, and by the way, but this woman, you, there's a whole wall over here that you guys don't see. She still wanted it to be painted a different color. They see a little bit of it on this side of your head. So then why don't we just fucking paint that? Well, because that's what I wanted to do. But I chose the color you wanted. I was like, we wouldn't have a pod. There would there would be are no we, purpose for a podcast studio if it wasn't for Steve Trevino. Are we seeing a so pattern here, folks? I chose the color you wanted. On the podcast, we're having a lot of firsts. This is the first time <laughs> that she's ever actually moved when I asked her to move. This is the first time that I picked a color and she fucking went with it. I know. I chose your color and then you walked in and you saw it and you walked right back out of the room and you're like, I hate that color. Everybody can see your fake. Everybody what? sees your fake. It's no. all bullshit. No, it's no, all- no, 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 no. I picked the color that you wanted and, I- and now I think we might need to repaint it. <laughs> We're not fucking repainting, dude. We're not. And then... So then all of a sudden she's like, oh, I, I bought shelves like the next day. And I was like, what's happening? No, but then you got upset. First, you, you tell me to pull the trigger. And yes. then when I do, you get upset because you said I spent too much money on the shelves. No, 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 no. Oh, you were grumpy no, when you no, found no, no. out the price of those shelves. No, no, no. I am. I, I know. I was. I was. Uh, <laughs> you were at a no, loss for words I was and at, grumpy. I was at a loss for words because when you told me the price of these shelves, I was like. And it's my fault because I don't know. You have no clue what things cost. What good furniture costs. I, I don't know. So you when you, when no you told me the price, and then, you know, Renee, If I had bought shelves at Pottery Barn or West, uh, West Elm, it would not have been that much less than the cost of the And then shelves. Renee goes, they're vintage. They but, are. They match this piece of furniture, which you guys, this piece of furniture is not going to stay here. It's going to move to another corner that you'll probably just see like the end of, but. Um, which by the way, so, you know, I, I am of the belief that, that cheap is expensive. You know, you buy something cheap, it costs you money later, right? Buy a right. good piece of furniture that you like, right? And, and uh, again, I, I just get taken by surprise <laughs> when you were like, it costs this much. I was like, Oh shit. Like, but you'll drop half the cost of that piece of furniture on a meal for a group of us. No problem. And not think twice about it. And this is going to live in our home for years and years to come. We're not yeah, just going to eat it and poop it steak out. Steak lives in my belly. It lives in my <laughs> belly and we have fun and we talk and we break bread together and we make memories. That's different. And this but, shelf is going to be on camera no, no, every week. For the record, I'm not mad. For the record, I'm not mad. I was just like... You were grumpy. Well, and then, and then you have to... No, I wasn't grumpy. No, you also have to understand... You go, that, you paid what? Well, no, because when it came, those three shelves, uh, those metal things were by themselves. Oh, that's true. And then there was like three people. I was like, what the When hell? you see it disassembled, it's literally like three, and you're three like, metal brackets and how boxes. Was, how was this this much? Yeah. Right. And even the way it's assembled is just like these thin metal bars that go into so, slots. And, and then just to clarify, and, and Renee taught me this, this is all mid-century modern. Yes. And it has become very popular. And, and because it's become very popular, people remake things to look yeah. like the originals. Renee buys the originals. Well, so, when we lived in California, I could score stuff on Craigslist super cheap, but that's not a thing anymore. So when you found, I want to tell the story about this piece of furniture. So when you found this piece of furniture, you were so, she was so excited and she's like, oh my God, it's a real thing. It costs this much. I said, I said, it's baby, beautiful. it is a good looking piece of furniture. I said, if, if, if you like it, buy it, you know, and, and 
this is also my style because it feels traditional. I'm not, yeah. I don't like modern. Yeah. I know a lot of people like modern. I don't like modern. I like I like old school. I like wood colors. And it feels so, like it's been lived in. It has some life. Yeah. So she buys it. It's very, very expensive. Did we buy that one in California? No, that we got here. Um, yeah, here in Texas when we first moved here. So we bought it. We brought it home. It, it was one of the first very expensive pieces of furniture that we bought. Well, very expensive is relative, but yes. To, to anybody, right. <laughs> no, to Steve yeah. Trevino. Steve Trevino has, you have no idea what furniture costs. So we, we moved, we've moved a million times in our lives, but we moved from our house here in New Braunfels to this new house. The movers were absolutely amazing and, and great guys and hardworking dudes and very professional. But I get a phone call from the main guy that, yeah. that I had been dealing with. And he goes, uh, Hey, Mr. Trevino, I, I, I got bad news. He goes, we broke a piece of furniture. And, and you know me. I'm a very laid back guy. Yes. I'm like, hey, man. And, and You don't and, freak out about stuff like that. I don't freak out about stuff like that. And also, mm -hmm. I, I don't ever get mad at people for making uh, an honest an accident. mistake. Yeah. You know? So I go, hey, man, no big deal. Uh, he goes, I go, which piece of furniture? <laughs> and he was like, oh, it's this one. I was like, oh, not that one. Like, <laughs> like we paid a lot of money for that one and Renee fucking loves it. And, and we have a piece that matches it in our bedroom. Yeah, and I'm like, oh crap, right? So he shows me the break and I'm like, oh my God, dude. So he goes, look, we have- It was like a huge chunk out of the corner. Like literally yeah. a corner just chopped off. And he goes, he goes, well, he goes, he goes, here are your options. He goes, we are insured and we will pay you the cash of- what that piece of furniture is. Which does me no good. I want my beautiful piece of furniture, not he the goes, cash. He goes, or we go find you the piece of furniture, buy it for you and bring it. Not or, gonna happen. He goes, or we can try to fix it and if you like it, we're cool, but if you don't like it, we'll still give you the money or buy it. And I said, I said, all right, man, I go, listen, try to fix it. But I'm thinking in my head, like there's no fucking way. Yeah. Like you've literally- It was like two, it was the, the corner piece. He was just like holding off. it in his hand. Yeah. So he does it, he fixes it, and holy crap, it is amazing. Yeah, I, and I, and that I, was by far the best option. And I love people. I actually, you know, when Rick comes to visit, I'm like, uh, Rick, uh, can you find, look on this piece of furniture. Yeah. And try to find where it's broken. <laughs> you like, love to play that game. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I literally, I have to point it out. And, and it, it was such a, and we'll, maybe we'll I show say, it. I I don't even know. Like now that I look at the furniture, I couldn't even tell you which corner it is. I'd have to look um, really closely. So maybe we'll show the, the amazing job they did. But I was just so impressed. You know, he came with his little block box and yeah. his little spray paints. And I'm just like, what is this? Like, it's truly an art. Oh, for sure. There was like this clay mold stuff and he re kind of rebuilt the corner to attach uh, it, it. It was unbelievable. Like, yeah. It was unbelievable. So we were, we were so bummed about it. But when, when you bought this piece of furniture, again, I was not mad. You told me, hey, listen, you told mad. me, pull the trigger, make decisions, right? Did you not? I did. And, uh, no. and, uh, <laughs> don't be using my shit, dude. <laughs> Shut your mouth. I will, I will fucking do it to you. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is I was, I, for the record, I wasn't mad. I was taken by it. Okay. When you said how much it was, I was like. Oh. Yeah, you had to remove yourself from the room for a but little again, bit. But <laughs> again, no, I find it hilarious <laughs> that because of the podcast, Captain Evil is less evil. And that's why I'm enjoying <laughs> the podcast your evilness has been toned down for the studio, for the audience, for the studio audience. out there in the world, <laughs> for all the people who watch and, and, you know, cause I think you read the comments and you see, they're like, Oh my God. No, no. Steve's the, the best. The comments and you're like, that I Bitch. read are the ones that are on my Instagram and Facebook, the team captain evil comment. But I, I am really proud of you because you've, you know, we've always talked about you posting more because I think you're so talented yeah. And I think that you're really good at, at style and fashion and, and design. And, and I'm really glad that you're on, on your Instagram Yeah, that you are posting more. Yeah. I showed in my IGTV, I shared Delilah's nursery and you, you guys were so sweet. Everyone was so sweet. It came out good. Yeah. And then another thing that, that is going on in Casa Trevino uh, that I want to bring up is, well, let's look at your face. What? Do you I even know what I'm going to bring up? Uh, well... I have a feeling. Um, I had my post doctor visit, and so I am cleared to exercise. But the big conversation my doctor wanted to have was, "What are we doing for birth control?" 
Well, you look. And it's a touchy subject. And I don't understand. Why Why does it have to be a touchy subject? Like, First of all. People do it all the time. First Men of all, do it all the time. First of all, um, I might be the pullout champ of oh the world. Oh, my gosh. Please. See, and I was okay. afraid to have this conversation <laughs> on camera because I knew ahead of time there are so many ways it can go wrong and vulgar and gross. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, it can go <laughs> It can go gross and vulgar, but it's who we are. It's who we are. No, no, it's who you are. Well, you married this. You married this and you secretly enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> you pretend that you're fucking innocent. And then we... <laughs> like, people don't even know, dude, the shit we say I'm to each other. i coffee. It's not water. Give like, me a minute. I, there was a comment of somebody that was like, I would love to share your podcast but you guys cuss too much <laughs> and we can't. And I'm like, well, if you, if, <laughs> if you heard the shit that we said to each other <laughs> off camera, you'd definitely not be able to share any of it. Uh, anyway, no. It, so it, this it, stuff it, Rick edits out, you know, we have been talking about me getting a hysterectomy <laughs> no. or, I wasn't drinking coffee right then. Not a hysterectomy. That's what a woman gets to have her female parts removed. Hey, can we not live in a world where, <laughs> where it is gen, not gender specific? <laughs> where it is, is gender specific. It's a medical procedure, Steve Trevino. Why can't I have a hysterectomy? Why can't I? Because <laughs> you don't have female parts. Okay. Well, you know what? We live in a new world. Uh, okay. So anyway, what is mine called? Okay. What is mine called? I, I don't know. I can't think of it right now. Snippy snips. <laughs> Uh, so, so no, 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 no. What's it called? Um, it's called uh, a vasectomy. Vasectomy. So a vasectomy. Men have a vasectomy, and okay. it's a very vasectomy. simple, easy procedure that only takes fifteen okay. minutes. Okay, Rick, in and edit out. out the me saying hysterectomy. I don't ever like sounding dumb, <laughs> so please. <laughs> I have a, uh, Maybe uh, we, so you know we they crossed that line a long Let, time Let's ago. go ahead and get to the edit. So we go right into it. Uh, so the Chevrolet <laughs> wants me to get a vasectomy. <laughs> Did that work? He's not going to fucking edit it out, dude. And I'm too dumb to edit shit out myself, so I'm fucked. We, we, we know that. We uh -huh. couldn't even get the cameras to work. Um, no, no. So, you know, we had that discussion. And, and then, the, the, you know, for me, you know, I, you know, like two years ago, here's my big issue with all of it. Uh, two, like two years ago, our friend Ch Trey, he goes, uh, hey, let's play golf today. Uh, thanks for letting everyone know that Trey's had a vasectomy. I'm sure he's really happy about that. What's the problem? You said there's no problem. <laughs> Well, no, but that's like a personal, private thing. I don't think there's a problem with it, but I'm, I'm saying you should just. They like, don't know out which. There's a lot of trays in the world. That's true. I didn't tr say Trey Lawson. I, I said <laughs> Trey. <laughs> so anyway, oh. uh, and his address is, and his phone number is. <laughs> well, here's a picture of Trey on the screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And his wife Sabrina, um, <laughs> who is never going to get pregnant again, apparently. <laughs> who used to share our podcast, but probably won't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're awesome. They're cool. I, I know he won't care, but um, I just love how there's no camera guys in the room, and we're still making ourselves laugh. <laughs> we do make ourselves laugh a lot. Um, <laughs> At Trey and Sabrina's expense. <laughs> yes, two, like two years ago, t Trey was like, "Come play golf with me," because tomorrow I'm getting the snippy snoops, right? Uh -huh. And I go, oh crap! So then, so then that was the first time that you had brought it up, and you're like, that's what you're getting. When we're done having kids, that's what you're getting. Well, no, because when we had the miscarriage, and we were talking about, are we done? Or are we gonna keep trying? And I was like, well, if we're done, we're done, and you're going to get fixed. Like if that's a decision we make, so we're done, and you are going. No, but my issue about the whole thing is that that how why do you get to decide that that's what we're doing? Because it's so much easier for you. Just like go and do it. No, it's my body, my choice. You don't get to choose what's going to happen to so my body. So take your body to the urologist's <laughs> office and get it fixed. No, if you were really a comedian, you would have said choose to take your body. <laughs> no, look, all I'm saying is that I will probably do it. And I was on the fence about it until the other day. What? So... Renee and I are having oh. friend, new, you know, new friends, and and they've become really good friends of ours, and and we were having them and their family over for, for like a, just an evening, un, not taco night at the Trevino, casual, you know, yeah, uh, dinner, and, and and they have three kids, and one of them is is like four and a half, and she's the cutest, right? so cute. 
And she comes running into our house. She's the first one in our house. And she goes, we're having a baby. <laughs> right? With her little doll in her Yeah, hand she has a little baby like, doll. Okay. But, but she's always talking about our baby. She's always talking about. Oh, the about- other day when she came into the house and we had just brought, Delilah was very little. And I said, okay, just make sure you wash your hands because we have a new baby in the house. And then she's got her baby doll. She goes, okay, make sure and wash your hands because my baby. Right. <laughs> so there's been a lot of baby talk in the house, especially yes. with her. And she goes, we're having a baby. And I'm thinking, oh, she's like. She got a new doll. She got a new doll or something, you know. And then behind her is her dad. And he has this look on his face. And I'm like. Like they're having a baby. Oh, shit. <laughs> I go, are you guys having a baby? And he was like, we're so happy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he, and then it was, it was, a, there was a really poor mom hadn't even walked in the door yet. Head. But, but he definitely had the look of like, and then, and then what got me was he goes, uh, I was scheduled to get a vasectomy next week. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit. Right, and, that, and, it, and it was one of those moments where it was it was really sweet because. Yeah, and then the mom walks in and she's like, "I was on birth control." Yeah, I was I on birth con- I'm on birth control, and we're yeah. pregnant, right? Um, uh, and, and the funny part is, is it, there was a moment where they were trying to explain to us, like, "No, we're happy." <laughs> <laughs> but the oh shit! Are so excited <laughs> yeah, about but, it. Oh shit! I go yeah. look, dude. I go. You don't have to explain to us, right? Because if me and you, a lot of people have been there, I think. But but if me and you accidentally got pregnant again, we would oh, ha- we would sure. feel the same way. Yes, we would we would know that babies are such a blessing because you always right. say that babies are good luck and they're blessings. But but you're still going oh shit. Yeah. How how are we gonna juggle this? Right. Like, yeah. Oh crap. Right. For sure. So so that's like my mom and my dad with my sister. <laughs> That's what, yeah, really. Which, by the way, it always cracks me up because you know, you know, I love Becca. I've talked about her uh, on this podcast before, and, and how much I love her. She's like a, a little sister to me, and, yeah. and you know. But it's funny because you know, Becca's very intelligent. She's a, uh, a doctor in physical therapy. Yes, but there's and, an eight-year difference between us. And, and yeah, eight year, So when you were uh, pregnant with Garrett, she calls and she's like, you know. When you have babies at an older age, there's, you know, they could have Down syndrome and they can come out, you know, right. blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, Becca, we're younger than your parents were when they had you. <laughs> so maybe you don't know that you're not normal. Like maybe. Nah. <laughs> but it was funny. We love you, Becca. We're it, just teasing you. It, it, she knows that. Mm-hmm. You don't have to tell Becca that. But, um, <laughs> You know, so that was what put me on the, um, okay. Like, you're, so you're getting it. Well, yeah, I got, I got a schedule. I'm a very busy man. For the record, um, he's getting it. Uh, hold on. That's, uh, that's, uh, Mr. Trevino from Aztec Chevrolet checking in on us oh. and asking us. I mean, that's, that's another thing, you know, here's, here's Aztec Chevrolet who sponsors us, who, you know, they're not obligated like he just checks up on me. They're good guys. Yeah, he he just checks up on me. Good morning, sir. How's your day? Hope everything's going well. Like who does that? Who does that? So if, if you guys are looking to buy a Chevrolet, please go to Aztec Chevrolet to get your Chevrolet that you need because they truly care. They're good South Texas people, yeah. and I assure you that they will take care of you. So Aztec Chevrolet once again. Thank you so much for taking care of us. The phone number is right there. The phone number is right there. <laughs> and the Aztec label is no, right there. It's right. No, it's right there. Uh, it's right there. It's somewhere. It's on here. Aztec Chevrolet. Check them out. Uh, but that was very nice of him to check yes, on Yes, that was. Um, where, where, were, uh, where were we? Uh, you're getting a vasectomy. Well, uh, again... I was upset because you made the decision for me. No, That's it. Uh, and let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't okay, want to get you're, the. You're getting it. Let, let's let them decide if it's my body, my choice. Okay. Oh, no, no, it's not about your body, your choice. It's that like we and you even talk about all the sacrifice I did to make two babies and all the things I've done to my body, and it's a much more intensive procedure for me to go in and get it. And so I just thought like, if it's only 15 minutes for you and it's no big deal, you just go in and get it. Ten four. Ten bam, four. bam. Thank you, ma'am. 10-4. I hear you. That, that's not what wham, bam, thank you, man means. <laughs> like, put it, like, oh my God. Do you not realize what wham, bam, thank you, man means? Yes, okay. I do. But right. just, you know, same thing. 
Okay, so you had something that you wanted um, to talk about specifically. You getting a vasectomy. Was that the one you wanted to talk yeah. about? Oh, and just just that the I just wanted people to know the podcast studio is not done. It's like a work in progress. And actually I got um I found an artist out of Austin who is custom making us a table. He's doing a table and he's doing a floor to ceiling. It is wood unbelievable. Wall. The speed oh. in which my wife is moving for you people. Thank you. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of you for watching and, and being judgy because it's helping me. <laughs> being it is judgy. Helping me. <laughs> it's also helping me get custom designed tables by the Wooden Road Home. Um, well, we're going to go beautiful work. We're going to go visit him we um, are. tomorrow. Yeah. You found this guy. He does amazing work. It's totally in our wheelhouse, totally our style. Yes. And we're going to go visit him actually tomorrow. To Look, I'll share it on my Instagram. Oh, you will? Yeah. Good, good, good. So we can get an idea of... Well, and, and I get so mad because this is furniture that we're sitting on from our formal living room. When you and, first walk in our house. When you first walk in our house. <laughs> so every day, and, and I'm not one of these people. It's just how I am. I'm not going to leave this in here and leave my formal living room. Well, I'm sure Rick uh, and the camera guys wish you would because it's placed for the camera. Let's just leave it. So we're going to blame you. It's your fault oh. that we, because we don't have chairs. Well, listen, um, I can't, but I have out, to take it back out I there. can't pick out chairs because I had a design designed around the color on the wall that I like. And now I've got to figure out how to make the color I don't like work. So here's the thing. Again, what are we learning? If we don't do what Renee <laughs> wants, <laughs> there is hell I to pay. I kind of set myself up for that. It's not there hell. There is hell to pay. It's not hell. We're getting a custom-made table and a floor-to-ceiling beautiful wooden art wall. And and by the way, the, the one thing, Rick, the one thing I told Renee, because I love to gamble, because I love Vegas, there's these really cool coin machines where you can put a quarter and then it knocks the quarters down, right? And I know that... I would play it. I know that my dad would would enjoy it. I know that your dad would enjoy you it. And really I go, think someone. You really think you or someone is going to sit in here yes. when we're not filming by themselves and play your yes. coin machine? Yes, yes. So anyway, my point is, see, it's already starting. My point is, I go. That's all I want in here. I want my coin machine with my little stool, and I want it in here, right? All uh, you, you know, want, everything. I, no, I, Steve Trevino. Look, I smoke I cigars. I, I smoke cigars. I wanted a humidor. That was a no. I, Where do I we wanted have room for I, a humidor I, in I, here. There are cameras. I wanted my bar in here. That was a no. No, no, that's and, happening. You're gonna get a bar. And, and I go, I go, I just want my little coin machine. And she goes, she goes, oh yeah, yeah. And then now she's like, you know what? I don't know if it's gonna fit. It's probably not going to fit. You know I'm what, like, Steve Trevino? You seem a little ungrateful right now when there is a bar <laughs> and posters, a oh, huge ass sign you just with your call me ungrateful? The wall, you know what? Uh, the wall is hey, your color. You got your wall color, you're okay? You're going to talk like that? No sex for you. <laughs> Lucky me. I'm going to deprive you tonight. <laughs> no, and you're going to be Steve. And I'm going to be like, no, remember what you said? I'm going to go back to the podcast. I'm going to go, look what she said. Look what she said. Right Hopefully now. we recorded it this time so you can't go back. Um, but, I, you know, uh -huh. the, one of the things that I wanted to bring up and, and, you know, Rick asked, he goes, all right, you know, what do we want to talk about today? And, and you know, we just kind of gave him the, you know, we always give footnotes because, you know, we never know where it's going to go. And we never know. We just kind of have an idea of, of. Yeah. But one of the things that I, there's two things that I really, really want to talk about. And, and one is, you know, everybody's been talking about, oh, my God, this little girl's going to change Steve. This little girl is going to wrap, you know, wrap, be wrapped around Steve's finger. And, and it's that is happening. No, she's going to have you right, wrapped me, around right, her right. finger. Yeah. And it is happening. I'm madly in love with this little girl, but I truly believe that it's changing you. I think that this little girl, and, and, and by the way, people have, and, and I, think that, I think that you're more beautiful than ever. Whatever happened? Oh, I think that's love and life, baby. No, 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 no. I, I, I people say on the all the time they see it too. Oh my God, Renee, you're glowing. Oh my God, Renee, there's there's just something about you, and I honestly believe that it is that little girl. You, you, you have, and I, I've said it a million times in the past few weeks on the podcast. You have been amazing, and it's and it's keep literally, going, baby. I won't interrupt you. No, it's literally <laughs> ruining my comedy. You being great is fucking up my career. 
<laughs> oh, don't worry. I'll find something else to annoy you <laughs> but, with. But, but I, I, I think I got you a little speechless, but you, you don't think that this little girl has changed. Like, I, I don't. It's taken off some of the. I think it just comes edge. with being I think it just comes with being a second time mom. I think the first time you become a mom, it's like a shock to the system to have someone a little life that depends on you constantly. It's such a like crazy drastic change. And you've even talked about how like there's this maternal instinct and there are things that I just handle that you are that's not, not as your good strength, at. right? And so it's a shock the first time. You almost have to like mourn your single life when you become a mom, or not single no, but, life because we were married. But you know what I mean. No, but more, but more than that, I, I I think that that in anybody and and me, one of the big turning of the pages for me mm -hmm. was accepting the fact that I was the married guy. I was no longer. Oh, you I was always no, talk about that in your I comedy career. I was no career. longer single. I no longer did whatever the fuck I wanted to yeah. do. And when I, you know, you, you look at at um, Grandpa Joe's son, and there's anger and frustration, right? Yeah. And then when I did Relatable, I had come to a point in my life where I was completely okay being in love with you. I was completely okay right. being the husband. And I no, think there, that, there that, definitely was that with, with me. I mean, you, I was, that's... I was not quite ready when we had Garrett, I was not quite ready to have kids. And you were like, starting January, we are going to start trying to have a kid. It is like happening. And then we got pregnant right away that time, the first go round. And, uh, and so it was, it was like, I, I mean, I was trying to be an actress and I was like, how am I going to do this now? I'm, I'm pregnant and then literally a year later we moved to Texas and it was like, and now how am I going to do well, this? No, no, no. But there was, there was a, uh, you know, us living in Los Angeles, there's a lot of single people, older single people in Los Angeles and your whole crew was still single. Except for like one or two. Like one or two. Yeah. And your whole uh, crew, but their life so, was drastically so, changing at the same time. You right, know? but you were the married girl, but you still, you know, of course, with me you being were on, on the, the road, road, I still got to live right. life. Not, not I hate saying then, I live life like I a single felt girl, like but all of a sudden, you now have a kid, and you were having a really hard time, yeah, adjusting to being a mom. I'm mommy now. Yeah, for sure. You know, and I think what I'm trying to say. Well, no, but then I realized like traveling on the road, me, you and Garrett, how fun being a mom could be and how much I loved being a mom. I was honestly surprised by how much I loved being a mom. I was surprised on how much you love <laughs> being a mom. No, but. but the, and then I just wanted to have another one. But but that's what I mean. And I, and I think that whatever Delilah has done to you looks good on you. Do you know what I mean? I think I... You don't feel I, it? No, I... You don't feel it? You're more patient? You're sweeter? You're kinder? <laughs> I'm not being... No, just I guess general. I don't feel it. I just know that... I mean, I, I shouldn't say I don't feel it because I do see her but there's as a, but, such a gift. But there's definitely... She has taught me patience. There's and, a glow about you. There's. I'm telling you, you're more beautiful today than you were the day I met you. And, and there's a, it's because of this... You know, it's like it's like me, right? Being able to go... You know, I, and I saw the turn in my comedy because when I walked on stage, I was frustrated with you, but it was very clear that I was in love with you and I was okay with that. Yeah. I was okay being, and I am okay being that guy. And, and now more than ever, I take a lot of pride in being a good family man. Yeah. Right. I take a lot of pride in, Hey man, yeah. I do the right things. Yeah, there, de there definitely was, after Garrett, there definitely was a surrender of, I really like being a mom, I enjoy being a mom, and I think at first there was this fear of like, I'm going to be a mom, and that's going to define my life. And that's okay if that's what this phase is in my life. It doesn't, it, this won't be my whole life. So, right. so love it and soak it while they're little now. But, and but it's like, you know, for me, you know, I love to travel. I love to have fun. I love to be out. I like having drinks and smoking cigars and hanging out, right? I love those things. Yeah. Which is why every house that 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 we buy, I make a badass patio. Oh, because, I thought I was like, are we going back to no, the no, damn no. humidor and the coin machine? No, no, in no. The no, no, no. <laughs> and, and and I explain to people, you know, like 
we are now at an age where, man, I want to have drinks and I want to have a good time. And I, but I also don't want to be out at the bar. So I will make my patio feel like a good time. Yeah. You know, I'm putting speakers out there. We did these beautiful pavers, which yeah, we, we got to show the, 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 the photos because this guy, Milton, Oh my God. They have he been, talked us into the pavers. We we're just going to pour concrete and the pavers look beautiful. Well, and, 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 you know, I always try to reward professionalism, hard work, right? Um, you know, people who are on it and who want the job, you know, cause yeah. I ended up getting several bids. And then when Milton came in the house and he was like, no, 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 this is the work I do. We can do pavers. We can do this. And yeah. then literally I go, I go, okay, what's the pro you know, what would you charge me? He tells me and I go, I'll let you know. And then the guy is already at the paver place 30 minutes later, sending us pictures of, these are the paver options. This mm -hmm. is what you could do. And then that evening, he's drawing up the fireplace, the outdoor fireplace. Yeah. And I'm like, I go, you know what, dude? You got the job, man. You know, and, and he came in a little more expensive, but I'm willing to pay for that. Yeah. I'm willing to pay. And then, and by the way, it has totally paid off because we walk out there. So we did these circles around the tree and I want it done right. And very so slightly, it wasn't a perfect circle. And I go, and, and sometimes people make you feel, and, it, and then I felt bad because it's such hard work to lay yeah. those pavers, right? Yeah, yeah. I go, hey, Milton. I said, um, I go, correct me if I'm wrong. But he goes, no, 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 I see it. He goes, I see it. We'll take care of it right now. Right now. Like, he didn't make me feel bad. Like you do for, to me? Yes. <laughs> but I don't have to anymore. Now I have a whole group of people. <laughs> Then make you feel bad and help me move things along. Uh, but, you know, look, if you are in, uh, if you are south of Austin and you want this guy to come, man, and, and I'm not saying this on this podcast to get a discount. I'm not saying that uh, because it helps us in any way. Yeah. I just want people to have a great experience like I did. He's awesome. And he's amazing. So if you want to hit us up because you want to see our, well, I think we can, uh, you know, now that we're at the home studio, I, I think that uh, Rick can put up photos now and, and, and do cool stuff like that. So um, that is awesome. And then um, I, I've been uh, having a hard time. And maybe that's why I've been laughing so much on this episode. Yeah. Because uh, you knew you wanted to talk about this. I knew that I, I had to because I think it's important. Um we, uh, I, and of course, Renee, when she married the family, I lost a, an aunt and in, in, uh, in the Mexican culture, in the Spanish culture, we, we use tia. Tia is, is an aunt. And, uh, my tia Blanca, um, passed away of cancer pretty suddenly, suddenly. Yeah, it was quick. And, uh, it, it was tough for me because it is my dad's, uh, sister. And for a time when my, when my dad got divorced, uh, my dad had to move in with her. I didn't know that. Yeah. So we, we lived there, me and my sisters, when we were with my dad at that time in our Your life. sisters too. Yeah. We, we stayed at the Ablancas, you know. And by the way, her house is always immaculately clean and the woman cooks every single meal and everything is from scratch and everything is homemade. All your cousins, they all the female cousins talk about, oh, can Tia Blanca make her homemade salsa or, or you know, tortillas they, like, or, yeah, I mean, all of her, Oh my God, the woman cooking. can cook. Yeah. And I just remember being a kid and, and feeling very comfortable there, you know, and waking up in the morning and, and she would have our eggs and potatoes and bacon ready to go, you know, wow. and, and I, I, I just felt very, it felt very normal and very, I felt very welcomed and well, that's my Tia Blanca, you know, um, but as I got older, I realized like, wow, man, what, what a burden to take in your older brother after he's just been through a tough divorce. And then to take in three kids and she never, she was never. Were your cousins in the house at the same yeah, time Yeah, too? yeah. So Monica and, and Pat were also living there and, and she never made us feel uh, like we didn't belong there or that, that we were causing a problem, which I'm sure we were. And I'm sure we were making a mess and you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I just, as I got older, I really thought about that moment in my life, you know, especially when I found out that she had gotten cancer and, and I, uh, 
I thought to myself, wow, like what a, what a great woman. And then she is married to uncle Chris. Um, and, and this uncle. is, yeah, he's white. <laughs> So if that doesn't help you, you know, it's Tia Blanca and Uncle Chris, right? It would be right? so weird to call him Theo Chris. Yeah, Theo Chris right? wouldn't work. He'd be like, what the hell? Because <laughs> he's, uh, he, my Uncle Chris is, and, and I, I want to explain to him because this is part of, of the message that, that I kind of want to get out there is, is, you know, my Uncle Chris is, is about as manly man as they get. Yeah. I mean, the, the term redneck. He's like built like you, but taller. Thanks, babe. <laughs> Yeah, he's like he's probably he's probably like six one, shoulders out to here. Yes, and and he's always dirty. Like when you go over to visit, and Blanca's, he's always working outside. He's always outside. He's always got the chainsaw. He's always doing something. And you know they've lived uh, out in the country, and and you know you, they'll they'll buy a new piece of property, and it's just land and trees, and then all of a sudden, six months later, the man has single handedly cleared out the entire two acres yeah. and made it look like, I mean, he's, there's a patio and a gazebo and a deck and, like, and yeah. you know, he's got a guest house trailer, <laughs> you know, cause he's, he's redneck, right? <laughs> it's true. He does, right? <laughs> but he's like, dude, he's one of the most burnt, like brute, like it's so hard to explain. I, I like, I'll, I'll tell you one story. We were working on a, on a Chevette. Uh, uh, you probably don't know what a Chevette is. I was going to say, I don't know. They're like these little car, little Chevys, right? Little car, uh-huh. like little hatchback. And okay. dad was rolling over the thing to pull the motor, to lift the motor out. And Chris was like, what the hell you need that for? And reached into the car and pulled the motor out. Like just grabbed it. And then and, and anybody... Our motor's like stupid heavy? Yes. Like anybody that's ever worked on a car... I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a Chevette. It's a four cylinder. But I mean, <laughs> the man reached in and then, and then everybody was just like, what the f-? Like, You know what yeah. I mean? And then my sister, she married a redneck, Kenny Wayne. Uh-huh. Right. So at Christmas parties, they always find each other. Right. <laughs> like anytime we're together, all of a sudden the rednecks, like they catch, like, I think they touch, they catch eyes. They, they catch the eyes. Two, the two lone white wolves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The two rednecks in the family catch eyes and <laughs> they start coming together, you know. And we always, we always joke because like, you, you, we're like, they're speaking in code. Like, you know how sometimes my family will speak in Spanish to, so that they don't know what the hell's going on? I think they speak in redneck. And you'll go over there and Kenny's like, oh, I'm going to go over there. And then... And then and then, and then, and then Chris is like, oh, hell yeah, God dang, we can recognize this, <laughs> right? And you're like, I don't know what they're saying. But whatever they're saying, it's good. Yeah. Like, they're loving it, right? So he's very redneck. He, uh, he, uh, dude, I ever tell you that he, he built, he made, <laughs> he made his own boat. Did I ever tell you about that? What do you mean he made his own? How do you make a boat? Uncle Chris out of plywood. And, and like, does plywood even float? Is and that like, like he like possible? Like physics? Dude, is that possible? He like he like he like fiberglassed it, right? And then my dad, and they, they always talk shit. My dad and him and I, all of them, right? Well, you yes, know my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my dad's like, uh, hey, we're going to Uncle Chris at the Ablancas, and dad's like, hey, you know, goddamn Chris, he made a damn boat. I go, what? He made a boat, and we're gonna get there. He's gonna want to show you that piece of shit, right? So we get there, and sure enough, Chris is like, hey, man, you want to see my boat? Like, I'm, hey. <laughs> you're right? when you do an impression. Like, hey, Steve, I, it's like yeah. your lips flapping yeah. or something. Hey, hey Steve, I'm, I made a boat. <laughs> you want to go see my boat? Right? So, and my dad's like, and my dad's like, hey, Chris, nobody wants to see that shit. That's like, nobody wants to see it. And I'm like, no, Chris, I want, I want to see it. Right? <laughs> Dude, he opens up the garage. <laughs> and it, it was, it was so good, terrible. You know what I mean? No. Like he really tried. Oh. Like he really he painted it right. <laughs> it was so bad, dude. And he's like, "What do you think, Steve?" And my dad goes, "God damn, Chris, what is that? A parade float? What are you gonna take it down the goddamn parade, <laughs> dude?" And then Chris was like, "Chris, like, hey, Cunyao, right? Because he speaks Spanish. God damn, Cunyao, right?" <laughs> it was so funny. But he, I mean, that's and and he's just such a he's such a tough dude. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, what'd yeah. you say? Like, he's just, like, he's very, yes. uh, very man's man. Right. I mean, For very, sure. you know, he's got the dually. I got my dually. You know, I mean, he's just, everything about him is just very, um, he's just brute manly energy. Rugged. And he doesn't, yes. Rugged. Rugged. He doesn't talk much. 
right? But, you know, he's very... He does do an impression of my dad, which is hilarious, right? He, I'm like, I don't hey. think I've ever seen him do it. Oh, my God, dude, you got to ask him. I, I go, hey, Uncle Chris, I go, do the impression of my dad. And he goes... <laughs> 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 Um, but through, through my aunt's passing, I saw a side of my uncle Chris that I had never seen and it broke my heart Yeah, and it, it really emotionally touched me and it, and it, it made me think, well, first I'll say this, um, I have to work tomorrow. Uh, I have to go to Lubbock and and that is the day of my aunt's um, celebration of life is what yeah. they're calling it. And I'm not going to be able to make it again. So Garrett and I are going to go. Yes. Again, talking about, you know, sacrifices and things that you have to miss. But I, 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 after watching uncle Chris post on Facebook, uh, I go, you know what, man, I have this weekend off last weekend. Mm-hmm. I can take uncle Chris fishing, get his mind off things, get him out of the house, you know? Yeah. So I was able to take him fishing and oh my God, everything he talked about was Tia Blanca. And, and not, in a, not in a somber way, right? Right. He was talking about all the good times because they spent every minute together. And they were they fished together, they hung out together, you know. And, and one of the stories that I'll share right now I, th- I thought was just hilarious, and it says everything about the Trevino side of my family. Um, so Chris, you know, we're out on the bay. He used to live on that bay. And he goes, man, one time... He goes, I, I bought a boat, a little John boat, right? A little metal boat, you know? And he goes- He bought uh, one instead of made it. <laughs> yeah, he finally bought one, right? And he, he told Tia Blanca, he's like, come on, babe, let's go fishing because they would fish together, you know? Uh-huh. And Blanca was like, I'm not getting on that damn boat, right? <laughs> and, and he's like, no, shit, it's a badass boat. We can do it, right? <laughs> so she's like, hell no. So he's like, I'll show you, Blanca, right? So he gets in the boat and he paddles out. This is a paddle, like- metal paddle boat right so not much better than the one right. you built <laughs> so he goes he goes man i'm 100 yards out and the damn thing starts to sink right and he goes i look over at blanca and blanca's like right so now he goes i can't even sit in it because it's halfway full of water i'm walking in the bay because the bay's only like three foot right you can you walk know. the whole he's way. like i'm walking in the bay dragging Aww. that thing down i gotta walk through the mud and the dirt i'm all wet and blanca's over there laughing her ass off he was like got to the side i picked up the damn boat out of the water like he is a big old gorilla yeah, you know yeah. he goes i threw it <laughs> he goes i threw the damn boat at her feet and he goes blanca just looked at me and said Row, row, row your boat gently <laughs> down the street. He goes, God damn, I was pissed off. He goes, and then, he goes, then later on that afternoon, she made me lunch and I'm sitting down to eat my lunch and she sits down right next to me and goes, row, row, row your boat. He goes, oh, God damn, I was so pissed off. He goes, he goes, and then that night, he goes, it's real quiet. We're going to bed. He goes, I think she's asleep. And then I hear, row, row. <laughs> but he, he's, he's, He's telling me this story and, and we're laughing. We're having a good time. And it was really nice to be out there with him. But, you know, and, and I don't think, and it's funny to me. And, and, and it's, I always find it very, very entertaining when I get comments. And I do. I get comments that are like, you know, oh, Steve, you know, you're so whooped by your wife. And, oh, my God, dude, you're so whooped. And, and, and I laugh. Yeah. I laugh because... They don't get it. I was going to say, it's not that at all. Uh, they don't get it, right? They don't know what it's like to to love someone and something, like our family, more than you love yourself, right? So so when I... When, and it's usually young people that, that are, are people who aren't very smart yeah. that, that go, oh my God, what are you, what are you whipped? Or people I, who I, have never experienced love like that before. Right, or have never experienced being in true love. Right. And, yeah. and, and when you're around and, and, you know, it, it goes back to, you know, couples that we hang out with are, are, you know, when you go to a party or you go to somebody's house and, and you just feel that things are good at that house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, the people, uh, you know, you go visit Rick and, and Gigi and we go to their home and first of all, their home feels like a home. And then there's just a comfort level of like, these two people are in sync. They're just good. Yeah. Right. It's just a home yeah. and, and you feel 
the love that they have for their family and, and for their, you know, their spouse. And, and I don't sit there and go, Rick's pussy. What man? I'm like, dude, this is awesome. It's not a word. Like it's great to be around, you know? Yeah. But Chris, Chris posted, um, a couple of things that I was just, I like, saw that I've yeah. been reading them. Like so I saw the other night I was up feeding the baby at like 3 AM and he had literally just posted something. I think I know what you're going to read. Um, well, here's one of them. Um, Blanca to me. Uh, you better keep my house clean. Sweep. Uh, he goes, I sweeped and I mopped the floors, sanitized and cleaned the bathrooms and kitchen, vacuumed the whole house, dusted all the furniture, washing clothes, and I'm still not finished. Woman, you asked too much of me. <laughs> I would rather mow the grass, weed eat, and trim the trees. That's not as hard as this is. I always said I could outwork three men half my age which is true yes and then he goes um but i never included women i never included you blanca that phase uh, or that phrase i know i now think i had good reason and then he goes salute to all the women in my family oh i just i get to it because i think of him cleaning that house thinking of her and just sort of going through it doing everything she did don't cry, dude. I'm trying uh, to. I'm trying to keep it together. I know. You know. True love gets me, baby. This is the one, and and that was the thing, man. Like, it, it was. It is true love, you know. And 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 the feeling that you that I have gotten, and I have learned from the loss of my aunt, you know. And you always, you always go, man. You know, when I pass, am I gonna leave something behind? You know, it, it, am I gonna, am I gonna affect people? You and, mean like and, a like a legacy, right? And my Tia Blanca has Memory. definitely affected me, and and learning through Uncle Chris and her, it's okay. It, it, you know, for this man's man who you would never say was weak, you would never say was not a man's man. Yeah, professing his love for my aunt has really taught me. You know, so this is the one that that really got me. I have a hard time. I was like, oh my God, I'm already. Um, you, he wrote this on Facebook. You must move on with your life, they say. You must continue to comfort life's challenges, they say. But the fact must be spoken. No one will ever dance with me like her. No one will ever cook for me like her. No one will ever love me like her. And no one will ever be able to tame the wild animal inside of me like her. But I will, and I must move on somehow. Life goes on. And I just, you know, it, it also made me feel very close to Chris because I feel the same way. You know, I feel like you're the one that tamed this wild animal. You oh. know, and, and I don't think... It works both ways, baby. You change me in a lot of ways, too. And I don't think people quite understand... I mean, people thought I was going to prison. You know, people, I mean, I was, I was uh, a, a wild animal, you know, and, and, you but know, that's when, what when love you, does. I didn't, you know, like I think of us, it's, I, what, I was 19 when we met. I didn't yeah. see you like that at all. That's not at all what I saw. Um, so I just wanted to share that, you know, with, with the people that watch the podcast, because I think a lot of people that watch the podcast, truly understand what we're trying to be and do on this podcast, you know, is like, is, how, what do you mean? I think they, that they, they see that we're honest, we're real. Um, it is truly about, um, a relationship. It's yeah. truly about the struggles, right? The hardships, and, and hopefully that trying to... you want to, to strangle me, but we're still laughing about it? Oh my God, dude, every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but I hope that, that people watch this and they say, you know, we have so much fun with Steve and Renee because we see ourselves in them, you know? Yeah. Um, and I just want to dedicate this episode to my Tia Blanca, my Uncle Chris. Yeah. Um, I'm truly sorry that I will not be there tomorrow, but my beautiful wife... And my beautiful family will be there representing me. Um, and I'm glad that 
that I was able to um, spend time with Tia Blanca before she passed. Um, and I was glad to be able to take Uncle Chris, the legend, uh, fishing. Um, so we leave you with that. I am Steve Trevino. This is Captain Evil. Thank you for watching. Thank you for um, helping us in our marriage, in our life. And uh, please, please like, share, review, follow. Please let other people know. So, and love big. Yep. Thank you so much. <laughs>